Welcome to Beyond the Bottom Line. Good evening and welcome to Beyond the Bottom Line. Today we're very lucky to have Mark Bernard with us. He's a sales trainer, corporate mindset profit coach, a speaker and an author, and he's going to be telling us all about sales success and particularly about having high performance goals but still having holistic values. So welcome to the program, Mark. It's great to have you here. Oh, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. <laughs> well, everyone's used to me going on about holistic values and holistic success because it's one of my total obsessions. And one thing that fascinated me when I looked at your website, on the homepage, you lead with he who wants it less wins, which obviously my holistic brain thinks, oh, that's a holistic valued approach. So am I right? Or is that just my wishful thinking? Why did you start with this? And, you know, what inspired you to start with that as the title? Well, it's, it's so important in sales that you don't want to come across as desperate, yep. right? So in sales, there's a saying, he or she who speaks less wins Yeah. because less is better. However, you know, from a holistic approach, where I kind of look at my clients or when I go after prospects, I always think to myself, do I have a thought for every feeling and a feeling for every thought? Yeah. So is there a balance there? So I'm moving in a, in a direction where I'm going in with their agenda, not my agenda. Yeah. So, and I'm willing to lose it because if there's not a match or if there's not a fit, then I'm willing to say, I don't think this is going to be a fit, but I will, I will refer you to someone. So I'm not after the sale. I'm after building a relationship. Yeah. I'm after... Uh, being authentic and trying to bring a solution, bringing a value to them. So they like me and I like them. And I would like to think of it as they're interviewing me as much as I'm interviewing them yeah. to see if there's a fit. Yeah. So I'm interviewing them to say, listen, do they fit in my core values? Do they fit within my plan of who I want to work with? Yeah. But when I say, you know, uh, he who wants, who wants to win, speaks less or whatever, you know, whatever the uh, he who wants it less wins. That's just going in and thinking, okay, I'm willing to lose this. If I become desperate, they will smell it. They will, they will, they will sniff that out. And if you're there again for your own agenda, you're not going to get the sale. So I want to, I want to move in a holistic approach to go, is it going to be a win-win? Yes. Yeah. Right. It, it is. It, can I bring the solutions to the table rather than me trying to get a sale so I can put bread and butter on my table? Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Right. Yeah. I think that's really important. I know I used to be in sales um, I, because I used to be in real estate and I specialized in rural real estate, not the, you know, flashy, expensive villas on the coast. And I had people coming that I would just say, I'm sorry, but I really don't think it's what you're looking for. I don't think it's right for you. Even if they saw something that they said, I really want this. I just think you just do not understand what you're talking about with this different culture, different environment, different everything. And I'd try and push them away because for them, I mean, investing in a house, it's the biggest investment you make in your life. It is a lot of money. And also from the point of view of me as a salesperson and my business, if someone then doesn't like what they've got, you get a bad reputation and they complain all the time. So from, you know, both sides, from them getting value and their dream and me as my company doing something good that people are going to be happy with it's got to be right so that's why i really love the fact that you've got that i think it's so important and particularly in sales because sales it's so pressure pressure it's quite difficult to keep that sort of belief so it's good but i know successful sales is really challenging and it's really high pressure so what do you think companies can do and leaders and sale managers and all of that 
so that they get the top results, but they still have a supportive and positive environment for the teams and not just for the client? Mm, great question. You know, it, it comes down to company culture and sales culture. Yeah. And I look, I, I, I help companies build a company culture, right? Yeah. What's their vision statement, their mission statement, their core values. Yeah. Right? And then that has to filter down into their staff. And then we create a sales culture. So that means everyone in the company is speaking the same language. Yeah. Because when people are speaking the same language, they move in unison and they're a team, they're a tight team. Yeah. And to build that culture, you have to have the unspoken word word of, of having your mission plastered all over the office or if they work from home around their, their, their mobile office or virtual office so yeah. they know what their mission is, what their mission is. But more importantly, and it's core values. Yeah. If you don't have a strong core value in a company, it's going to be very difficult to have a cohesive team. Yes. Right. So I really help companies create those core values. So when the salespeople go out, not only are they speaking the language, but they have this, this corporate esteem yes. because they, 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 they work with the company that is collaborative, right? They're, yeah. they're, it's, it's, it's not about the sale. It's about everyone moving forward in a unit. Yep. Right. So if, if a company can achieve that by creating that culture and sales culture yep. with core values and they're collaborative, in other words, they have an open door policy. Yep. Right. They don't have ego. It's, it's not the alpha male that runs the place or alpha female. You know, it's, it's none of that. Yep. It's we're, we're all peers and we're moving moving forward and yes there's going to be a decision maker but they follow uh kind of an unwritten code which is the core values and and the only the, the important thing about having a good culture is that you attract clients with similar core values yes now you're attracting your ideal client yeah it's a win-win all the way around so if companies can do that and create that culture they got it made yeah do you find companies struggle to identify their core values because i know some companies they seem so focused on the sales or the win or the whatever that it just gets a bit lost and then if they aren't very clear even if they do want to help their team it's not that easy so how do they sort of get back from being lost if you know what i mean well for i mean uh, uh, not to bring ego in but they need to hire a mark right they need to hire Bernard <laughs> oh, yeah, right, <laughs> right? Oh, and, and I'm, i i say that because i i have had clients and that are 30 plus years old yeah and yeah. yes they have a, a, a vision and mission but they don't even know where it is it's buried it's full of dust yeah. but they don't they do not have core values all right and you know, we, there has to be an unwritten rule and it could be a simple, a simple core value is, you know, respect one another. Another yeah. one is open to possibilities, yeah. right? Integrity. Yeah. Those, those uh, respect yourself and others, yeah. you know, take responsibility. As I said, those are mine. That's why I'm mentioning my core values. And I look for companies that have that integrity that are open to possibilities. So if something goes sideways, we're, we have an open mind that we can, we can correct it, right? We take responsibility and also, most importantly, is uh, we, are, uh, we respect ourselves and we respect other people around us. Yeah. So if we, don't, if we don't have that respect, it's very difficult to move forward. So if you have those unwritten core values, even going, if you have an office you're going to, and just the respect of if you have the last coffee, cleaning out the coffee machine. That's a, that, that, that's an unwritten rule. And you know how many, you know, that could be a, a game, a, a game changer for someone having a good day or a bad day when they come into the office. It's yeah. that simple of an action. Yeah. When you're walking by, you know, you high fi just that positive attitude. Yes. It just that, that whole, again, bringing in that culture. Right. Yeah. And uh, I always go back to core values because that attracts your staff yeah and it attracts your client yeah 
And then once you have that, you will attract killer salespeople because yeah. they want to be in that environment. Yeah, that's really good. So would you say for that to work, the big, big, big boss um, and the directors, they have to naturally have that within their their character, their soul, their way of thinking. Yes, and you know, yes, they should. However, there's a lot of companies out there, as I said. I've, I've had 30-year-old companies, 15-year-old companies that did yeah. not have, uh, uh, they didn't even know their sales targets. You yeah. know, they just go, go sell. Yeah. Or they'd have staff go, just, just go produce. Yeah. And they really didn't have any guidelines. They didn't have any, what we call KPIs, key performance indicators to let them know, here are your parameters. Yeah. Now, what do I need to do? And that comes down to communication. So if you have the top end, i.e. CEO, CFO, COO, and even the VP of sales, regional managers, managers, if they can communicate to their entire team, yeah. it, it's, it's going to function like a well-oiled machine. Yeah. But if you don't have that communication, and, and don't let me, you know, don't start me on emails, because yeah. internally emails can destroy Yes. Uh, a culture of a company because it's the interpretation of the reader, right? Yes. At the at the end of that email. Yeah. And you know, one of my rules, every client that I have, is that when there's an email put forth and you you it kind of rubs you the wrong way. Number one rule: never ever ever respond to that email. On you pick up the phone. Yeah. You always pick up the phone, and that has to come from the top down. Yes. Right. That's again creating that culture, that sales culture, yeah. that company culture. Yeah. And again, when everyone feels like they're working well, especially when you have a larger company that is having different departments, yeah. it's so important that they're communicating with it, whether it's a CRM, a customer retention management system, or whatever that looks like, how they are, how that is communicated is key, key for the top down. So when I go train people, I want to make sure I'm training the CEO and the VP of sales and then the salespeople. Because if I'm training the salespeople, what they learn, especially when I'm talking to them about, you know, feature benefit selling or help, you know, helping them understand corporate esteem, right? The, the mindset. But if it's not coming from the top down, it's like hitting a brick wall. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's unfair. So, so we, I love working with the CEOs. And, and when I have a CEO or even a VP of sales or a regional manager or sales manager buy in, they are going to succeed. And when they have a mark come in, uh, uh, you know, uh, we nail it because we have a willing party. Yeah. And, yeah. and everyone wins. I think that's really important. Um, I recently interviewed a guy who's a leadership expert, and he really has a lot of experience. And one of the key things that he says is great leaders, it's personality, not position. Because Absolutely. it's the personality that makes everybody feel the support, the value, and the fact that you have the position leader, it doesn't make you any different from the team. You're just doing a different job. You're still mm -hmm. a person with a personality, part of all of that. And that's what makes such a difference. And that's what makes great leaders. So that corresponds very much with what you're saying. Um mm -hmm you know, the respect and people understanding. So, yeah, if I can add one more thing on to that is that um, the, the top end, the CEO, the CFO, the COO, the, any manager, VP or otherwise, they have to be aware that their staff are being heard. Yes. There's so many, you know, when I go into an organization or just even a, a small company, when there's a, a bit of morale issues, yeah, right, uh, w whatever that looks like, it's it's usually because they feel they're not heard. And when they do, when they do say, "Hey, what's your opinion on this?" It almost go, falls on on you know flat ears, and they do the opposite. Yes. So you know the CEO has to be good listeners and making sure that their staff are being heard yep. most importantly yeah right yeah yep. no i think that's so true and so us 
the staff, the salespeople, um, if we really want to have high performance and we've got really ambitious career goals, how can we adapt what we're doing or how can we innovate things so that we can succeed, you know, we can get the results, but we've still got balance. You know, and I know everyone's like work-life balance, and I don't mean work-life balance because I hate that word, but really mm -hmm. so that we've got the balance to live life and have fun as well. It doesn't mean we have to be perfect nine to five, but that we can prioritize when we need to. So everyone has emergencies, but that we can really enjoy what we do and our normal life. And we don't just sink under all of the pressure of trying to get there and we can enjoy our ambitions. Yes, I always say, what happens at home happens at work and what happens at work happens at home mm. right so there is a connection and if you ever feel burnout or you know let me let me put it this way there are a lot of unhappy people out yeah. there because maybe they're not doing exactly what they want to be doing and what one of my modules in my training is balance, right? The mindset of balance. And what I suggest to your listeners is just kind of, you know, kind of draw a circle like a pie and then put in their professional, uh, spiritual, family, yep. uh, friends and community and physical, right? Yep. Those five, five elements. And then be honest with yourself. Go, okay, where out of 20% each, 100%, you know, divided by five is, is 20%. So what percentage would you give each of those if you're being honest with yourself? Yeah. In your life? Yeah. Like where would you, what, what, what percentage of what you're doing right to, for family? And if, for your physical body, right? Your spiritual self. How about your friends and community? And how about your profession? So yeah. if you're looking at, you know, 60% profession, <laughs> right? And then all the other ones are lacking. Well, awareness is 80% is, 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 uh, of success. Yeah. So once you're aware of that out of balance, you can now cognitively go after that and go, okay, I need to focus on this because we don't know what we don't know. Yeah. Exactly. Until... You know, until I say, until it's measured and what's get, what gets measured gets treasured. Yes. So if you can measure that and some just, a, just gives you a, wow, I, I, you know what? I'm not, I don't have any friends. Like I, I don't have time to go out. Yep. Wow. Family. Like I never see my kids. I, I, I don't, we don't even have a date night with yep. my partner. Wow. Like how, how bad is that? So it, it gives you an idea of, of your, what you need to do. That's the first, that's hard to do because you have to be honest with yourself. You have to look in the mirror and go, where am I? Yep. Like, get a measurement. And then, then, then you can act with that, that balance of going, okay, I, I need to back off on this. I need to increase that. Yeah. Right. What do I, what do I need to do? So that's the first part because Honesty with self, yes, and and again, bringing that awareness, yeah, that's eighty percent success. So that's where you want to start. So draw that circle, just do a self measurement, and then with that, then you can start focusing in because if you're most people are unaware, and then they wonder why they're so unhappy. Yes, because they're unaware of that balance. They they don't they think they got it together. Yeah. But in reality, when they do that measurement, that self-measurement, like I have a, a tool that I use for my clients to let them know where they're at if they answer these questions. Yeah. And it, it, it's, it, it's a self-realization that they go, wow, I'm way out of balance. And I thought I had my act together. And unfortunately, Ann, and, and listen, I'm good. I'm good at what I do. I'm still out of balance, man. I'm still working. I'm still trying to achieve that 20, 20, 20, and 20, and 20%, yeah. right? Yeah. It's so really it's difficult, it's difficult yeah. right? Because we get it caught up with life. But if we bring awareness to it, that will help. Because I'm a big believer 
what happens at home happens at work and what happens at work happens at home and the management level has to understand that yep exactly right yep. because people are just not going to get the productivity and the, the attrition is going to be very high because people are they're going to wonder why are we losing so many employees yep. well they're maybe driving where they could bring in an expert in maybe understanding physical fitness yeah right how can you work at home without weights bring you know in, in training i always tell uh my my client like my decision makers which are ceo vp of sales and i say when i come on board we need to present this that it's not a punishment to the team yes. they're, it's not they're not hitting their targets therefore they need a mark to come in and you know crack the whip and give them the tools so they hit their targets no, 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 no. It's not that. It's we're, we're, we acknowledge you. We know you're important and we're going to reward you because you're part of a great team. Yeah. And when you approach it, like it's, it's a reward. So when you bring those resources into your staff, whether it's a sales trainer or a, a physical trainer or a spiritual trainer of, of uh, you know, a non-modality, modality type person, yeah. And they can grow from that. Man, that is people are going to be knocking at their door going, I want to work here. Yes, that's right. Because it makes such right? a difference. Yeah, it shows yeah. the appreciation and support. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, that's what companies need to do. But people need to be aware first. So they have to take responsibility core value. Yeah. They need to take responsibility, do their own self test and go, wow. Or I, you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm happy where I am at. Yeah. I just got to adjust a little bit. Yes. Yeah. No, I think that's really important. Makes uh, Once you know who you are and what you're doing yourself, then you can think, eh, okay. So I think that's a great idea. But you've, you've talked about a couple of the tools there and the things that you can bring in. What other types of systems and types of training and strategies and things mm. do you recommend that help with getting good results and also that lead towards professional excellence? Because it doesn't matter who you are, if you're working in a company, if you're working in sales, there is always going to be that vision, that push. So how can people do that mm -hmm. better and better for them? Right, so I do a, I, I do a whole uh, beginning of the module for my training is you know the, the sales system and the sales talent. You can always bring sales talent into a company, right? Someone has a lot of experience, but if you don't have a sales system, yeah. meaning, you know, understanding your ideal client, uh, having a clear message, again, that core value, and also everyone speaking the same language of the unique selling proposition, right, with outcomes for the client. But also you need tools like what are my sales targets? What is my expectation? Where is a roadmap? Where is a blueprint? So I, I can measure what, where I'm at at any given week. I don't suggest you do it per day, but if you do it per week and per quarter and per year, that's measurable. Yeah. So I have a whole, I have a program, it's called a gap plan or a forecasting plan, and it tells you exactly what you need to do yeah. at any given time. So they, you know exactly where you're at in any given quarter. Yeah. So if you're, see, if you're not, if you don't have all, you have funnels, right? Sales yeah. funnels, you have your, your lead funnel, you have your prospecting funnel, and then you have your, maybe as, as simple as, as a closed funnel. That's the most simplest way. Well, you have to make sure that you keep that lead funnel full. You have to make sure that you, you keep that prospecting. In other words, people that from a lead, you move them into a qualified prospect. Yeah. In other words, they're going to buy from you or someone else and whether it's you or another competitor, they're interested. And then you move them over to the, the, the closed funnel and you have to keep all those full yes. at any given time. Number one, but how do you navigate that? That's the sales system, the, the sales process. And again, till with companies that I have done, fifth, I'm wondering how are you in business yes. for 15 years, 20 years? You have no sales system. You have no, you have no process. Yeah. So it's, it's a loaded question, but it's, again, you, you're, 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 you're going from the lead 
and you the process is navigating that sales rep to navigate the the, the prospect all the way through yep. to the close. Yes. That's the sales process. How does that look? And for each company, it's different. Yeah. Right? Because it depends on it's a product service. What's the sales cycle? Right? All those things and the price and if there's demos or not. So there's a lot of variables. But the system is really having a clear, clear process of navigating through that sales call. Yeah. Right? Navigating it through, moving them from the lead to the prospect. What do I need to say? There's dialogue to that. And it's having a conversation, like I said earlier in the first question, you're, you're bringing value, right? You're, you, it's the one who speaks less or who, the one who wants it less wins. Yes. So you're going in there and saying, I don't know if I could be of service to you, but let's find out. Let's have a conversation. Yeah. And right. yes, there are segues to yeah. move to the next, next, next uh, phase or next funnel to close them. So it's a win-win. Yeah, that's interesting. right. And how to ask for it? Yeah, because with that, um, all of that, yeah, it's very clear once people know what they're doing and how they've got to do it. But one of the things I found, particularly because of having been in sales, so I understand it a bit. I've seen a lot of other salespeople, and I used to manage a team of salespeople as well, and. The clients and customers, you know, whether it's a service, whether it's a product, they can be quite astute in sensing the feeling behind the sales pitch, exactly as you say. So what can you do? And when you've got a company that is a much more a holistic environment and a positive holistic environment, what are the differences that can be seen? And what's the resulting impact both from the companies and from the sales teams because it definitely has a different effect yes you know the, the easy answer is it's all about the questions that are asked hmm. to find out what they need you yeah. know i don't like using the word their pain points or their challenges my gosh everyone has pain challenges but yeah. One of the things that I teach is, is feature benefit selling, right? Yeah. And what I call the four S's, which doesn't mean much. But you're, you're, when you're in a call, you're kind of, uh, you have parameters and you, you, you have control of, or you, you're in control of the call, right? Yeah. It's called the four S's. That means you have a bit of a small talk. You, you show off a little bit. You've done some research on them. You state unique selling proposition. And then you start asking questions. The, the answer to your question is in that last S, the questions that are asked, yeah. the outcomes for the client, right? What's in it for me? So, and, and then feature benefit selling. So, you know, where people, people, salespeople prematurely go into negotiations, they go to price, they go to whatever. And one thing you have to understand, once you start talking about price, you have a willing party, therefore you're doing business. But the sales reps really fall fall down on that. That's you don't you don't even want to bring up price. So when you have the conversation of that the, the holistic approach, you're, you're you're like you and I are doing right now. We're just having a conversation. Yes. And um I, and yes, are my questions scripted to get to the bottom of it? Absolutely, because there is a skill to it. You have to know the the, the right questions to find out. If your product, i.e. Mark Bernard's product, yeah. right, the seven steps to sales success or achieving sales success or igniting your revenue, whatever that looks like in my product line, am I going to move forward and help them? Yes. And the only way I can do that is by asking them questions yeah. so I know I can bring value to them. Yes. That's the only holistic approach that can be done is through a dialogue and communication. But you know what I'm finding now since, since COVID is so many people are relying on social media to do the work and they're not reaching out and communicating with them. Like they're, they're, t you know, DM people and they're, they're yeah. trying to, to do close the sale by email, by DM 
and not really making that connection. So there's no personal contact. I mean, well, I, 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 they're, they're trying yeah. to find a way to use social media and networking events and, and virtual dinner parties and all these things to do the selling for them. It's not right. Possible. And yeah. it's, it's, it, it blows my mind that when I say, listen, you can have the best marketing in the world, but if, if you don't know how to reach out to them and, and get a discovery meeting or get a meeting and then walk them through your product or your process. So to see if you have a solution for them. Yeah. Th th that's a lost art. And it blows my mind. Well, I have marketing. Well, but that doesn't sell for you. That yeah. that's your brand that that yeah. tells the world about you, but you still have to learn to close. You yeah. start to ask for the business. Yeah, that's right. Right. Yeah. And it blows my mind that uh, people are not are, are trying to detach themselves. And I'm telling you, you want to talk holistic? It's about having a conversation, yeah. whether in person or Zoom. Yeah. Your choice. Yeah. But it's it's building that relationship. Yeah. It's building the trust that, you know, I just so I don't mean to go off on a tangent here, but I just had a a, a, a prospecting client send me over a, a, a speaker one sheet. I'm going, why is this in there? What's in that? And what, what, what message are you trying to put? And it was all about them. And I said, you know, I, I see nothing about what's in it for the client, like for your prospect. Like yeah. there's nothing on there. Well, it's all about me. They have to, no, they don't care about you. What yeah. solution can you bring? And the only way to do that is have an authentic, organic conversation. Yeah, exactly. And learn how to close. Yeah. But people are afraid to ask, right? Yeah. The money issue and the, the whole uh, financial thermostat that we have. That's a whole different topic. Yeah. Right. So are these, I know with the sales courses and things that you do, are these the types of things that you teach in your sales courses, in your sales programs? Yes. Yes. I'm just, I'm just starting actually one, a six week course. Yeah. So let me give you a little bit of background here. I'm, I'm, I, I come from B2B corporate. So I, I yeah. train corporate with large corporate with many branches and yeah. with, with an in-depth company. So what I found was when I go to these networking events, because they're not my clientele, I'm looking for CEOs, VP of sales, regional managers. Those are, yeah. those are my decision makers. But what I found was so many entrepreneurs, solo entrepreneurs, again, they had the marketing there. They had the product there. They had their service there, but they didn't know how to sell. Yeah. And through this, through the COVID, it kind of made me take a step back and go, you know, I could really be of service to these entrepreneurs. Yeah. Because you so I created, called, yeah. yeah, I created a, a six week course called Ignite Your Revenue. Yeah. Explode your sales, explode profits, how to sell to corporations or how to sell to businesses. Yeah. It's a six week course and it gears exactly to what I'm talking about that you may have the best marketing. Yeah. But I'm going to teach you how to sell and sell organically, sell yeah. holistically, yeah. sell in the 21st century. Yeah. But it's business to business and it is to, to, business, to businesses, right? Yeah. As long as they, they need your services, well, then I, I'm, your, I'm your individual. That yeah. starts May 5th and it goes every Thursday for six weeks. And then I'll have a, VIP, a three day VIP day for yeah. them. And give them more in depth, uh, you know, if they choose to go further with me. Yeah. But uh, and I'm doing that three times a year. So if they if they're interested in any way, shape, or form, I'm pretty sure you're going to have my information there. Yeah. Oh, and uh, I'm international, so I'm everywhere. That's why it's called Bernard Training International. You see yeah. that there. <laughs> so I'm everywhere. But it's it's needed right now, and that's why I have created a, a program just solely solely for solo entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs. I think that's that such a good idea, such a good idea. Yeah. And I mean, even because I, I've been in sales in companies as an employee, I've managed sales teams as an employee, but also I've had my own businesses with sales within my own business and people working for me in sales. And you really need to know how to approach people but how to feel that you're doing it okay in yourself because 
a lot of people just feel uncomfortable selling, but there's a difference between selling anything to anybody with no soul, no values, and knowing how to do it when, as you say, you're really caring about what the client's going to get, the value they're going to get, that it's the right solution for them. And that's, I think, the biggest part of doing a program, to be able to understand that so that you know you've got the skills, you've got the tools, you've got the resources, but you know yourself, you're doing it for the right reason, and you know how to do it in the right approach. So it sounds great. It sounds very good. I shall have to look into more of that. (laughs) Yes. And let me just say one more thing. You know what really annoys a decision maker is skirting around the issue without asking for the sale. That's the number one issue businesses have. Like, just could you sell me please like don't don't make me go uh yeah i'm i want your business and i let uh, you you send me the contract no you that's not how it works you know you have to ask for it and people are waiting to be asked and not being asked going okay thank you very much nice meeting see you later bye but i need them but now you just told me that i'm going to go find your competitor that knows how to sell and sell me because people love to be sold to but in a in a proper way Yep. And that's the difference. Yeah, exactly. It sounds brilliant. It sounds a really good course. Right? Yeah. So, yeah. But, okay, can I just say any last piece of wisdom? I know it's the killer question I always do at the end, yes. but any yeah. last piece of wisdom or key strategy that you think we should really keep in mind and that's going to help us going forward? Well, I, I'm biased. So what I'm going to first <laughs> say is... Uh, if you're serious about your product or service and you want to move to the next level, do your due diligence, but hire a sales coach. I mean, a, a real professional sales coach. Yeah. Uh, I've been doing this for 20 years, but do your due diligence because to do it on your own is very frustrating. You hit and miss and you wonder why you're hit and missing. That's yeah. number one. Uh, learn, learn skills that you, you need to, to, to develop in sales, and you know the number one, the number one skill in sales. You know what that is, Anne? Really, is in sales, the number one skill in sales, listening. Yeah. Number one skill is listening, and we don't listen. Yeah. We 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 go and we we're, we're programmed to interrupt. We think of ourselves ninety percent of the time. When was the last time anyone who's been on the call, been on a networking event, and they're, they're going, oh, what am I going to say? And they're not listening to any of them. What am I going to say? Oh, my gosh, i got to I gotta get this right. And they're not listening to maybe solutions out there for your company. So here's another thing that I want to say is you can't do it on your own. Yeah. You need a team. This is, this is the, the lone wolf is gone as far as I'm concerned, right? It's a collaborative. Listen, we're talking, I'm, I'm in Canada, you're in the U.K., this is the new way of doing business. Exactly. It's collaborative. We're, we're, we're international. Yeah. Right. And you have to reach out and build your tribe so you can build that expertise around you, share that expertise with, or, or pay for it or however that looks to, to hone your skills. Yeah. Right. We can't, I see so many different coaches and, 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 and so forth out there that only take a piece of it and only give you one piece of the pie. Go out there and find someone that gives you the whole process, not just one thing of how to use social media or how to use. That's, that's my, that's, that's the key. If you can, if you can find the, the, your circle, your tribe, the people that resonate with you and create your core values Email me if you want, and I will. Matter of fact, ah, I know on my website. What am I doing? On my website, I have a free gift for everyone. If yeah. they want to go to my website, it's it's creating your own vision, mission, and core values. It's free. Okay. Just go sign up for it. Okay. So, so go to my Bernard dot training. It's yeah. just Bernard dot training. Nope. dot com. Just Bernard dot training. Okay. Perfect. Hit that link on there. Put your name in there, and uh, we'll you know we'll send you out some a little bit of a it's a pdf fill it out and that gives you the guidelines of your mission 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 vision and core values and you have that and then with that you can move forward that's that's half of your battle right there because then you know who you are yeah and where you stand 
Yeah. And then you attract those people around you. Yeah. That's that's the number one thing. If you can do that, yeah. everything else will fall in place. That sounds brilliant. Brilliant. Good. Thank you yeah. very much. Uh, well, thank you for all of the advice. Thank you for all of the tips. It's very, very interesting. And I really do love the fact that you have a proper holistic way of approaching sales. So nice to hear. <laughs> yes. So, well, thanks for having me. No, no. Well, thank you so much for being on the show. So um, the website again, it's Bernard.training. Correct. Yes. Okay. Everybody and if you are in, yeah. yeah, if you are interested in a, a short notice, uh, but on May 5th, if you want to go to Bernard.training yeah. slash ignite dash your dash revenue slash you go there and you can sign up for the 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 uh the six weeks coming up in may 1st okay well, you may put that link in yeah if you send me i think you have sent me all the links but i'll double check yeah. if not if you send me all the links um yes. and i'll put them on the page so anyone who's listening um if you're you know running along with your headphones on you're going to have to click on the page to get the link unless you've got a very good memory and you can remember what Mark's already said. So, <laughs> okay, well, thanks again, Mark. It's been an absolute pleasure and it's lovely to hear positive sales. Yes. So, everybody, um, we will see you all again soon and really do go and visit Mark's website because you'll find it helps so much if you can get your values, get your mission. You know, it's definitely a step in the right direction. Thank you all. Thank you, Mark. And see you all again very soon. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.